Welcome back to another episode of In Swine Versation. Diverse pork industry passion and drive with Jim Magalski. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for the opportunity. Now, you're the Senior Director of Hog Quality and Protocols for Coleman Natural Pork and Nyman Ranch, and we're really excited to have you here today. So can you touch on your journey a little bit, where you came from in the industry? Sure, absolutely. So appreciate the opportunity once again to, to be a part of this with you, Jim. Um, you know, farm kid that grew up in Northeast Wisconsin, uh, very involved in kind of 4-H FFA through, through the years there. Um, did my undergrad at Wisconsin River Falls and uh, through that uh, four years had the opportunity to manage the swine research unit there for three and you know, that was really kind of the you know the additional driver to my my passion in production um, in, in kind of that next step. Uh, from there went to North Dakota State and spent uh, five years there working on both my master's and PhD in, in meat science and muscle biology and um, and since then, I've actually been with the, the Coleman Natural Nyman Ranch uh, Purdue Group uh, in a few different roles, but but sticking on the on the production pork quality side. Um, you know, through that process, you know, obviously involved with Wisconsin Pork Association, Pork Board, and Task Force, um, Pork Leadership Academy, all of those components. Um, yeah, and then today uh, working um, on the on the Coleman and, and Nyman side of the business, really all those things live animal uh, outside of procurement. So some of the key points of focus in your job, you've got a well diverse, well diverse job. You're involved in everything from live animal genetics, nutrition, compliance, segment of production. Can you discuss and summarize each point uh, that I'm going to talk about here? Muscle. Yeah, I, I think you know one of the pieces that kind of drew me to this role. A little over 11 years ago and and I, I think kind of aligns with our business model and, and system is it is a systems approach right so it's uh, having the ability to kind of to oversee anything live animal that ultimately leads to the quality of the product we serve a customer uh, and so we talk about kind of those pieces you know having you know having some some transparency or some oversight over each of those and how they interact with each other uh, to ultimately create the product that we're looking to achieve, you know, in the retail case or on the, on the plate at the, the restaurant. Um, and so all of those become important. So I, I work on our genetic side and in, in terms of what are the tools and resources out in, out in the, the industry today that, that fit our business and our model. And we need to continue to look at and explore. Obviously nutrition's a, a big piece of our business and in, in terms of both brands being antibiotic free and, and vegetarian fed and, um, you know, some outdoor raising systems, I mean, very different than kind of the, the off the shelf nutrition system today of, of the business. Uh, and so making sure we continue to bring those resources to our producers each and every day. Um, you know, our protocols management, how we raise animals, you know, making sure that, um, you know, all the things that we do to, to reduce stress in the animal's life, um, you know, and, and all of those ultimately, you know, drive the quality of the product we're trying to aim for and, um, so I have oversight of all well, of our meat quality focus as well. And you know, I think a unique piece of our business uh, in making sure that that, you know, really end product quality, whether it's color, marbling, pH is, is fed back to those producing it. And, and so we're on this, you know, similar journey of, of um, you know, high quality expectations and ultimately high customer satisfaction. What about biology? It's all about it, right? Um, just in terms of aligning the the pig with the system, with the process, and in working with our producers, all in the same regard to, to ultimately produce the best product we can. Um, and, and so that's, you know, being able to have those conversations, really big picture. Um, you know, a lot of our producers are, you know, fair to finish that they've they've got the sows, they're doing, you know, doing all the grow finish on their farm as well, and you know, and that's that's I think one of the unique pieces of of our business as producers that are really, really passionate about quality and, and making sure that, you know, when, when we put their name on, on product, that they're proud to, to serve that as well. So we, you touched on the eating experience, I think specifically marbling. Why is this important to you? At the end of the day, eating experience is, is how we move product, right? Someone, someone needs to, you know, want desire to, to pull that off the shelf or order that on the menu at the restaurant. And, 
Um, ultimately, eating experience drives our business. It's how ultimately I support our farmers and producers is to you know create demand and desire for our program and our brand. Uh, and you know, marbling at the end of the day is is flavor, right? Fat is flavor, and it doesn't take long to look at the pork cutout today and and over the last few few weeks and months that you know we we tend to have an inversion in the cutout relative to to fat, right? Products that are high in fat are, are also the higher price components. And, um, you know, starting to see that transition and making sure that, you know, we give our customers the, the best eating experience possible. Um, ultimately, bad eating experiences, you just don't buy it again. And, um, you know, that's, that's something I, um, at the end of the day, you know, getting a customer to pick up that package, not just the first time, but the second and third time, because because they want to consume that and want to feed their families is, is truly what it's all about. So do you think the eating experience is important, like on a large level, more than a boutique kind of farm stand level? I think I I was thinking, you know, how do we drive traffic of, of sales through the boutique part of it? And then other people brought the point about, you know, large scale eating experience. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, great, great question. Right. I mean, we're we're obviously in a niche business, right? In terms of uh, how we raise animals and the facility design and concept and, and so forth. But I, I think at the end of the day, I mean, a, a, a high quality eating experience is something that benefits everybody. Um, you know, I, not too many years ago, I think most of the data out there was fresh pork consumption was about, or fresh pork purchases in the stores average about six times per year. Um, you know, consistency and what it looks like in the case, how it cooks up at home. Uh, how it tastes, how it performs, right? Those those consistencies or inconsistencies truly drive kind of what happens. Um, and, and our industry knows that with exports as well. I mean, we we've exported um, you know some higher higher quality product as as an industry in general to to Japan and other Asian markets because because that's you know demanded or expected over there. So can you talk to me about the five and a half year journey from Nyman? from the genetics from Europe? Yeah, so so we talked about quality as it's, you know, an important critical compete piece of our business and in one of the four pillars of our business, you know, the others being kind of independent plant farms, animal care and sustainability. And, you know, we collect quality data on, on our producers each and every week and continue to give that feedback loop, um, you know, to our producers, whether it's genetic changes, nutrition changes, et cetera. Um, you know, and, you know, five and a half years ago or so, you know, it, it in order to continue to pursue those pillars, right, it looked like we had to get outside our current box. And and what are some other tools and availabilities to us to really continue to drive and and stay at the forefront of some of these quality discussions? And and through those conversations, you know, the journey uh, through some some really good partners took us to um, took us to Europe and specifically to Spain. And you know, long story short, we we you know, trialed some genetics there over the last several years and eventually brought bought, brought boards to the U.S. to to integrate within our system, make sure they worked within our producer model. Um, but really, really excited about that journey. Um, you know, just launched what we call our, our Iberian Duroc by, by Nyman Ranch here the first of the year. And um, I've had the opportunity to spend some time with some, you know, some food service distributors and chefs you know, throughout the U.S. and getting some really good feedback and excited about what that does for our business. What does this mean for the future? It's a good question. Um, you know, to, to us, it's it's just maintaining kind of our expectations and quality, right? And in terms of continuing to pursue, um, you know, how do we continue to get better each and every day? And, and that's really where this program's at of, you know, in a, in a market that continues to focus a lot on feed conversion and growth rate and feed efficiency, you know, making sure that we keep at the forefront, you know, consumer expectations and consumer tastes and, and preference uh, to ensure we are a protein of choice and, and are something that, um, you know, can be on, be on any menu across the U S and, and um, customers can expect a, a great eating experience. So what about Prop 12? I know Nyman is a supporter of this. Why? Yeah, great question. I mean, ultimately, it, it's it aligns with our production model, right? Our our, our production system protocols have, have been in excess of these requirements for a long time. 
Um, you know, we've learned how to manage that production system, you know, gestation pens, bearing pens with strong production metrics. Um, you know, at the end of the day, customers uh, continue to have choices and, and, um, you know, it's, it's where we've, where we've taken a position on this, this proposition. Any other thoughts on Prop 12? Any hot takes? I know there's protocols there from the beginning as well. Not a lot, Jim. I mean, it's, um, you know, obviously a lot of strong opinions on, on Proposition 12 uh, across the industry. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a, I personally have, have been involved in a lot of different production systems. I, I enjoy what I do today with, with uh, pen gestation and pen farrowing and large space requirements. Uh, I, I think we can be, you know, just as competitive production wise as any. Um, and, and that's, um, that's rewarding to me as well, just to, to be able to see those differences in animal behavior across those production models. So let's, let's talk about the Nyman Ranch Conference, uh, some of the producer meetings that you're doing. <laughs> Can you give an update on the last meeting? Yeah, so, it, and I think that's one of the unique pieces of, of the business and particularly even within, within Nyman Ranch is, you know, a couple of times a year, we try and get as many of our producers together as possible. So we have our, our spring meeting in, in Ames, which is traditionally just producer and vendor focused, right? So it's kind of a, a half day, three quarter day of giving an update on the business as well as um, having a trade show and, and a lot of important vendors to our business being a, being a part of that event. Um, and then also being an educational tool, whether it's, um, you know, new trends on the swine health side from a veterinary perspective, you know, whether it's tool, tricks and, and tips on the farm to continue to improve, you know, overall performance and productivity and health. Um, I think this year we talked about some barn designs with with a lot of hoop barns and how how we go about laying those out. And you know we've got a producer network that's you know tends to be a lot younger than than the industry. And that's that's one of the models that works really well for us in terms of you know producers engaging this and becoming part of a diversified operation. Whether they want you know 200, 400, 600 pigs on the farm, um, you know it can be pretty small scale. We work with producers as as few as five sows and pick up as few as five pigs at a time. And so, um, you know, we, we have a lot of new producers as well. So sometimes it's, it's down to the basics of, of production and operation. So it spans a gamut, uh, try to try to move those topics around each and every year. Um, and then uh, in the fall and in September, we have a really unique event, which, which brings together our producers and our customers. Um, you know, so, so breaking bread at the table with, you know, with our producers and business partners and, and customers all at the same table and having those conversations is, is really a unique event. You know, we bring in, you know, half a dozen chefs from across the country to prepare those meals with with our products and just a, a really good celebration of, of the, the business and the key players that continue to make it go. So there's a spring conference and a fall conference. Are they like different or? Yeah, so, so the spring is is really producer focused. Um, so that one's, that one's in, in Ames in March, um, you know, very producer centric. When we get into the, the September meetings, a little more celebration focused, uh, you know, we get, get our customers out to the farms and, and then, um, you know, like I said, get, get everyone in the room for a, for a really nice banquet one night of, you know, customers, consumers, producers, all of those in the same room and, uh, really enjoying each other's company, celebrating, you know, scholarships and, and awards. We give out all of our meat quality awards at that event give out all of our um, scholarships to the Nyman Ranch uh, Foundation. Um, so a really, really big celebration of, of the business on an annual basis. Celebration and a chance to meet up with customers. Absolutely. So I know ag tech and farm tech has kind of hit the hot topic over the last couple of years. How to be better for tomorrow than today. What works for Nyman on the ag tech front? Great question. Um, <laughs> you know, I, to to some extent, you know, we always we always got to get back to the basics, right? Te technology still doesn't, for the most part, replace people, right? And animal husbandry skills and, and basic animal care principles, uh, and so they're they're still tools, right? But they're not replacement strategies, and you know, so we've. You know, we use a lot of electronic self-feeding within the system, you know, from pen, pen gestation specifically. 
um, you know, record keeping electronically. But but at the end of the day, I mean, we're we're probably not as um, as early adopters on the technology side as some, just because it, uh, you know, an antibiotic free, veg fed, you know, high animal welfare type production system. Um, it, it still takes people and it still takes farmers and it still takes that high level of care and high level of focus. Um, you know, we always try and balance and we always try and use technology to continue to learn and evolve and, and challenge ourselves to be better tomorrow. Um, but I, at this point, I can't say it's it's replaced us, um, you know, try and try and use it from a manure management standpoint and, and getting solid manure out of buildings right? with with a better production system. That's uh, um you know, obviously you got to use technology there to, to try and, and maintain that model. But um, at the end of the day, it's still about the people, right? That's, it's probably one of the things I enjoy most about, about this business is, is, is the people, right? And continue to learn and evolve and, and interact and, um, you know, align on how we, how we want to raise livestock. So what about the Magalski way? So talk to me about, so your motto is staying status quo is not good enough. And how do we always strive for continuous improvement? Um, talk to me about that as we kind of wrap up and specific examples in relation to our industry. Yeah, and, and, and I wasn't on the team too long and, and you know, heard several people make the comment about never get comfortable, right? And I, and I probably didn't understand that or appreciate that as early on as I, as I do today of, of just you know, we can get comfortable in, in our own environment and, and making sure we continue to challenge ourselves, right? Goal of being better tomorrow than today. I mean, we have team meetings and conversations. I mean, that's that's kind of the, kind of what we try and do, right? How, how do you be 1% one, 1 better tomorrow? Um, and also just challenging the status quo, just because it's what we've done for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years doesn't mean that's what we should do for the next 10. Um, you know, I, I think Two items that we've talked about here today. I mean, pork quality is one. Um, doesn't like I said, doesn't take long to look at the pork cut out and, and know we've got some work to do on on consumer demand and, and just customer expectation of of quality, right? And taste and preference and color and pH and intermuscular fat. Um, you know, it takes a commitment to do so, right? We just because it's we're the we're the cheapest producer doesn't necessarily mean you know our products in the highest demand and making sure that we continue to learn from, from the proteins around us to, to ensure we keep, uh, keep our, um, uh, you know, a preference from the customer standpoint. And I think the other, you know, the other one that I tend to spend a lot of time on is, is on the genetic front and just how do we continue to improve there? It's, it's obviously not all about pigs wean per sow per year. Um, you know, probably the biggest status quo there is just even looking at cell mortality, right? Just because it continues to grow doesn't mean we have to accept it. I think, um, you know, continue to look at our production model and with our producers of just kind of continuing to learn and evolve from from that data and those experiences. Um, there's always an opportunity to be better, right? Whether it be on, on pig livability, whether it's pig quality, whether it's performance. But, um, you know, I, I think at times we can use economics as a as a driver for probably too many things, right? And, and just because it's the cheapest doesn't necessarily mean it's the best and, and trying to balance that thing, uh, trying to balance that that conversation. And um, I don't know that anyone's right. Everyone's got a different market. Everyone's got a different customer and consumer that sets their target. And I think that's the unique part of this business and this industry is room for a lot of different, um, a lot of different models, right? A lot of different opportunities, a lot of different business strategies. Uh, ultimately serving a lot of customers and consumers across the globe. And and that's, you know, um, small group feeding a large group of people. And, and that's one of the really unique pieces of this business. So as we're halfway through 2023, what is the one thing that you want to improve for yourself, Jim? It's a good question. I actually was just talking to the team the other day. I, I think, um, you know, COVID and Zoom and all these things, right? Made made a lot of relationships really transactional, right? And making sure we get back to to the people part of this business, right? Starting to, you know, see a lot more meetings and conferences come back to light, and and making sure that we don't forget, um, you know, that this business is still all about people, and 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 making sure that we take care of associates, and in a time where you know labor gets gets uh, less and less available, right? We got to continue to make 
swine production and in the production of food, uh, a, a noble profession and a, and a profession of choice. And, and we're going to continue to work on that to, to, to be that. Well, thanks for uh, joining us today on the program, Jim. I appreciate the opportunity, Jim. Anytime. Jim Migalski, Senior Director of Hog Quality and Protocols for Coleman Natural Pork and Nyman Ranch.